Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Hayward, you said your priority, your top focus is on safety and you feel very passionate about it. Except for your statement to that effect, I see, as you've said over and over again today, no evidence of that. Uh, the, uh, you and other uh, senior officials seemed oblivious to what was happening on the Deepwater Horizon rig. You weren't following the progress of the well. You weren't aware of the risks that were being taken. In answers to questions, you said that uh, uh, your top of officials under you, Mr. Inglis and Mr. Suttles, uh, I did, you would be surprised if they were following the happenings on the rig. You said you couldn't answer for them, but you would be surprised if they had been following the activities on the drilling rig. So who was following the activities on the drilling rig? Uh, you said there were people there who were the experts in their field. Uh, I, uh, I just find it shocking that, uh, that when the potential consequences of a mistake on a deep water rig are so enormous and you have such a high passionate commitment to safety that you seem so removed. I, I think operating in a deep water environment is like operating in outer space. And yet you seem to think that all is going to be taken care of in time. Now, you said there's a team of the best minds in the world working on how to stop the oil spill. Where were the best minds in your company paying attention before the spill? You were oblivious, and so were other senior officials, and I think this was a fundamental mistake in management. Let me ask you that. Do you think there was a fundamental mistake in management not to know? I think, as I've said, that we've made it very clear that the focus in the company is on safety. What management can do is ensure that the right people with the right skills are in place, the right systems and processes are in place, and the right priorities are in place, and the right investment is available to ensure that the plant that we are operating has integrity. So you felt confident that the people that were making these decisions, and we went through five in our letter to you, and many members asked you about some of these decisions, that the right people were making those decisions? I believe that the right people were making those decisions. And you have no evidence they didn't make the right decision. That seems to be your position today. Is that right? I think at this stage in the investigation, it's premature to draw conclusions as to what was and was not the right decision. Okay, so it's premature. Uh, what investigations what investigation or investigations are taking place to determine these facts? There is the BP investigation, there's a the Marine Board investigation, and the Presidential Commission. And are you going to be cooperating with all of them? We are, as we, as we have, Mr. Chairman, cooperated with your committee. Well, I, I, I question how cooperative you've been with our committee because I've heard very little answers to the questions from you today to the questions raised by our, our, um, our colleagues. When uh, you were asked whether BP made a mistake in well design, you said you haven't reached a conclusion yet. When Mr. Dingle asked whether costs were a factor in your decisions, you said you didn't know because you weren't there. When Mr. Doyle asked you who made the well design decisions, you said you didn't know. Uh, our committee is doing an investigation. Now, the reason we're doing an investigation is we want to know how this happened so that we can make changes in the law and the procedures if we're going to allow further drilling. Don't you think you ought to be more forthcoming with us? We will be as forthcoming as we can be, Mr. Chairman. Okay, look, give, me, give me the time horizon for your investigation. When will you have that completed? You've already had I, 60 days to do it. Is it going on now? It's ongoing, and we want to have access to all of the evidence before we make final determinations. But as we have made very clear... Give me, a, give me an estimate of when that will be concluded. Well, one of the most important elements in this is the blowout preventer. It remains on the seabed, and it needs to be examined. Okay, so we'll put that aside. How about the other decisions before, before the explosion, about the casing, about the centering of the, of the well, about all the other things that have been raised? Have you reached... Any tentative conclusions that you could share with us? As we shared with you uh, recently, we've identified seven areas that are areas of focus in our investigation, and we will continue to share our 
understanding and our thinking with you as that develops. Uh, Mr. Inslee asked you if uh, there was any action that appeared, that was there, if there was any action to, to save money. And you said there's no evidence of that. I, I can't believe you said there's no evidence of that. There's evidence. You want to know more about it, but there's certainly evidence to that effect, isn't there? There were decisions taken by the people at the time. And some of them, in, sitting here today, appear they may have been to do with money, but it's not clear. The, the, the decision, well, evidence for example, is not conclusive, but there's evidence. The, the decision, for example, to run a long string versus a liner mm -hmm. was, as it shows in the document that you highlighted to me, a decision to do with the long-term integrity of the well. There's evidence, and an evidence may point in a certain direction. There may be evidence that points in another direction. So you take the evidence and reach a conclusion based on the preponderance of the evidence. But that's not to say there's not evidence when we have some of these clear examples. Let me ask you this. Uh, you can't give us a time for when this investigation is going to be complete. So we're relying on you to do your own investigation. Why should we rely on you to do your own investigation? I don't think you have a terrific record of reliability that should give us comfort to have us step back and just wait to get answers from you until you've done your own investigation. Why should we rely on that? Well, we're clearly not the only people doing an investigation. There are many people doing investigations. All I have committed is that as we, our investigation proceeds, we will share with you all of our findings and all of the data and all of the information. Well, let me just say in conclusion, we, we delayed this hearing today so you could be prepared to answer our questions. We sent you our questions in advance. You have, you've consistently ducked and evaded our questions. There may be some reason you think this approach makes sense, but your evasion will make our job more difficult. It will impede our understanding of what went wrong and will make it harder for us to draft appropriate reforms. I think that's regrettable and an unfortunate approach for you to take to the work of this Committee of the United States Congress. And I'll look forward to seeing what you come up with, but we're going to get evidence, and I'd like you to submit for the record the names of the individuals who made those decisions in each of the areas that were under discussion in the letter we sent you. Would you be willing to do that? We'll make that available to you. Thank you. As we have made everything, to my knowledge, available to you. And maybe they'll have some answers they can share with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.